Hello everybody, my name is Akshay Narsuman and welcome to the 3D Experience Physics Apps Tutorials. Um, the first two, first two parts of this tutorial consisted of uh, performing a static analysis on a basketball hoop where a person or where a, where a basketball player would slam dunk and then would uh, hang on to the, uh, to the rim for a short amount of time and then let it go. So in the previous two analysis, we had run a static analysis of the uh, basketball hoop with a pressure load applied to the small section of the basketball hoop itself and uh, uh, we had checked out the displacements and we had also checked out the, uh, the stress values and uh, also checked out the contact pressure um, that was created because of this deflection. Um, there were two scenarios that were simulated. The first scenario consisted of um, a very simple setup where the backbone and the rim were tied and then a pressure load was applied to a small section of the rim. Um, the second scenario uh, basically added some complexity where the tie was removed and it was replaced by virtual bolts, basically bolting the, the rim and the backboard um, and uh, also contact between uh, the two parts that are in contact right here. Uh, basically, both, both the scenarios gave us very comparable results and now in this third tutorial, we're taking things to the next level where um, we are going to simulate a dynamic analysis of the, the same basketball hoop analysis, the same exact setup, um, except that now we are going to see the behavior of the, the basketball hoop after it has been uh, simulated. So um, the basic setup right here is such that the basketball hoop and the other uh, rim, uh, sorry, the, the rim and the backboard are tied together, and then a small pressure load is applied um, to this part right here of the basketball hoop. And uh, a second step is an implicit dynamic step where the pressure load is removed and uh, the boundary conditions remain as such, where this back part right here, these two faces right here of the backboard are clamped and we will observe uh, the deflection, we will observe the, uh, the behavior of the basketball hoop. Uh, to give you a summary of how the model is, um, let me go through. So right now I'm in the structural model creation app and here um, right click and go into modeling manager and here we can see all the entities that have been created. So for example, here we have two distinct parts. As we can see, we have the backboard and we have the rim. And so we have two meshes that correspond to the backboard of the rim, which is tetrahedron mesh one and two. And then we have a tie connection that connects both the parts together. And then we have two solid sections um, where we will translate the material properties on, into the analysis using solid sections. Um, so if you double click the section, you would see that it basically contains this particular material that is steel underscore basketball under hoop, underscore hoop. And uh, let me just close this and I will show you the material properties that I have used for this. So here, if you just click on edit, um, simulation domain, and if you click on this entire product, if you click on this material right here, you should see the material properties pop up. And here you can see that it's basically, it's just an elastic material with the Young's modulus of steel and the Poisson's ratio of steel, and also it has a density value. Since this is a dynamic event, uh, the, den the existence of density is a must in the material property. So click OK to accept changes, any changes. And that's pretty much the model setup right here. Now, let me show you how the simulation is set up. So I've already run this simulation beforehand. So I'm just going to go and switch to the scenario module right here. And this will show me how, or this will show you how the simulation is set up. So click scenario, and you should see that it has automatically switched uh, to the scenario app. Uh, to set up the simulation, I'm using the mechanical scenario creation app um, because the implicit dynamics is available in this particular app. So um, as I had described before, the, the basic uh, setup is such that, uh, let me just hide the mesh so that we can view it clearly. So view, visualization management, hide the FE model, and that should give you the geometry and the boundary conditions and the loads. 
All right, so first things first, uh, if you click over here, you can see that you have two steps. You have static step and you have an implicit dynamic step. So right now we are viewing the contents of the static step. So in the static step, you would see that the, the back is a restraint, which is uh, represented by the glyphs. And then you have a, a pressure load that is applied to a small face over here to visualize the internal edges. Just go to view, then click on sharing with edges right here. And you should see the internal edges of the model. So right here you can see that a pressure uh, a pressure has been applied a magnitude of 5e6 has been applied and uh, these two phases are restrained now let me switch to the implicit dynamic step once i switch to the implicit dynamic step you can see that the pressure load that i had created in the previous step is deactivated it's not available in this step anymore which basically says that now it acts according to its own will based on physics um, so let me show you the simulation manager and show you what, what all entities are here with the simulation. So if you go here, you can see that you have clamp and you have pressure and you can see that the pressure is not activated here in the implicit dynamic step. So what we can do is uh, the default behavior for in, in 3D experience physics apps, when you create a particular entity in the first step is such that it is automatically propagated to the following steps. So if you want to deactivate any entity for a particular step, you can right click that that particular field and you can say activate or deactivate so in this case uh, since i've deactivated it so i can only activate it again whereas here i can deactivate the clamp if, if required um, also the other thing that i make uh, that i've in included in this is um, uh, requesting output so basically i'm just creating a field output uh, so if we double click this um, you can see that the field output is requested for the entire model and here in frequency there are different options so every n increments increments meaning um, when your analysis is run it basically breaks down according to increments which basically says that a certain percentage of load is being applied uh, for every increment and then it converges and then the solution moves on to the next increment um, so by default the option is it reports um, an output for every n increment so every increment um, but here since uh, i wanted to make it look very realistic over a certain period of time i had requested uh, output over x units of time and i'd mentioned x is 0.1 seconds um, so i'm running this analysis for a total time of um, of three seconds so basically the uh, the static analysis uh, is run for one second the time really does not matter it's only the discretization of the load that matters in the static analysis but since uh, uh, so i'm and i'm running this implicit analysis for three seconds uh the reason i've given so much of time over here is because it can it can exactly or it can capture the entire response of the basketball hoop after the load is removed so if it is going to vibrate uh, eventually the vibrations will stop because of damping uh, in the implicit analysis solver itself there is a little bit of damping that's included and uh, you will see the vibrations eventually stop and to capture all the vibrations i have given a, a sufficient time of three seconds that's pretty much why so after everything is set up the the next thing you need to do is uh, go to uh, go to simulate right here and then you can set the number of cores and you can click OK to start simulating the analysis. Uh, since I've already mentioned that I've done the analysis, um, I'm just going to go and switch to the results section of the uh, of this simulation to show you the results. So right here, as you can see, that the displacement, the maximum displacement is about 1.85 millimeters. Um, uh, this is just a contour plot that shows at the last frame that it is 1.85 millimeters um, i can show you i can uh, show you an animation right here so to animate your analysis your results just click on the play button right here uh, in the compass so so to slow down the speed of the animation you can just click on this button right here if you keep clicking it will control the speed so i'm making it very slow right now so you can see that right here so if I if I go every step or every frame, so this is the maximum deflection of the load, and and if I move to the next particular frame, you would see that you would see it go in the other direction, which basically is vibrating. 
and you can see that the vibrations basically die out eventually and then the rest of the displacement is pretty much common so this is how the the behavior is when you're running an uh, implicit dynamic analysis and uh, you can see that there is no displacement right here because these two components were tied and uh, also you will not see any stress values right here because the components were tied and it's considered to be one big unit so you will see since most of the deflection happens right from the start of the rim you'd see that the stress values build up only from here 